Thank you, Larry. Brother Larry Harp has been very, very seriously ill over the past year or more, and I'm so thankful to see him up here leading singing again. I love Larry very dearly. He's a member of this congregation and such an asset to the cause of Christ. We're really excited about having Brother Dan Wheeler with us. I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing him speak. Dan has been coming to the lectureship here for the past three years or so, and I've uh, become acquainted with him and have been impressed with uh, uh, him as an individual, as a Christian brother in Christ, and uh, so we're thankful to have him with us today to speak. He's uh, uh, studied at Faulkner University down in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, and obtained a, a bachelor's degree and then went ahead and a, a, a attained a master's degree from the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. He's been preaching the gospel for 15 years, and he is presently with the South Seminole Congregation in Orlando, Florida, and he and his wife, Grace, have three teenagers, and so he has his work cut out for him in that regard, that's for sure. But we're looking forward to hearing him speak on the subject, The Darkness of Satanism and the Occult, Brother Dan Wheeler. Thank you very much. I am delighted to be here in Fort Worth, although it is quite a change in some ways from the Orlando weather. It's not a change in that we do have a common faith, and I'm very grateful for the stance that this congregation and this school has had, and for the many, many years of reading after Brother Bourne and Brother Ramsey and Brother Miller. I gave my father Brother Miller's book a year or so ago for Christmas, and he reported to me that he could not put it down. So I'm thankful for the work that is being done here at this congregation. You know, when you talk about change versus not change, you may have heard about, now I heard a preacher tell this, so I think I can get away with it here in men's class, but you may have heard about the men's, it was an all-men's army, by the way, and they were out in the field for about three or four weeks, and they were just absolutely miserable. It was just terrible conditions, and one day the sergeant said, well, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is today we're going to get to change our underwear. And they were excited. They were all fired up. And he said, the bad news is, Smith, you change with Jones. Johnson, you change with Williams. So change and not change. We're glad to be here. And I appreciated being asked on this lecture. But frankly, I was disturbed by the topic. Now, it's interesting that as we have talked about these different subjects, Brother Boren has told us what relevance the speaker has to the subject. You may think, well, what qualifications do I have? Well, I am not a Satanist, but, nor do I play one on TV, by the way, but I do have three teenagers. <laughs> Enough said. The presence of Satanic influence, if you believe what you see and hear, all around you, it is extremely alarming. Just recently in Pearl, Mississippi, small town, America, a, a satanic cult was involved with the stabbings and, and shootings. In our own area, we have the sensational news story of the vampire slaying cult in which uh, teenagers killed the parents of one of the teens that was involved in the gang. Now, we've also seen the, the change in the media. And if you're not one who watches very carefully what comes in on your TV, there's likely to be anything coming in on your living room. And one of the television shows that now has the attention of young people is a program called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Not recommended viewing by me. Just want you to know that. Bookstores have an increasing amount of shelf space that is dedicated to Satanism, to witchcraft, or Wicca as it is called, and to all types of matters of the occult. And do we even need to mention the internet? Uh, one of the amazing conveniences of our time, used for good, but also used for evil. And obviously around Halloween every year we hear warnings in the newspaper. Uh, if you have animals, bring them in. Uh, because there are satanic cults out there that are ready to, to uh, dognap and catnap or 
to your animals and use them in uh, ritual slayings. Our young people are exposed to satanic influence at school. If your schools in Fort Worth or this part of the area are like the schools in Central Florida, then your children, your grandchildren, are in classes with students who will wear black clothing, who will paint their fingernails black, who will wear black lipstick and white foundation. And I'm not just talking about the girls either. Rock music goes a long way back. Those of us that are baby boomers were shocked and horrified if we tried to do right. Or some of our friends were not necessarily. But we had the group KISS for many years and it was, uh, we thought, stood for knights or kings in Satan's service. Today, our young people are hearing music of Marilyn Manson. And as you know, Marilyn Manson is a group, and that's not a she, that's a he, uh, who plays up on the satanic uh, trappings, the, uh, the decor, who has admitted, by the way, that Satanism sells. Now, before you become too alarmed, I'm going to plant the question, how much of this is of legitimate concern to us? And how much of this is hype? Well, let me tell you right off, I don't think that this is a problem that we should trivialize. But on the other hand, it's not something that we should run from and hide from. It's something that we should become educated on, become bold in, and be determined to to do the word of God, to preach and to teach just like we would concerning any other false teaching. Now, where did this come from? Did it come from Satan himself? Well, there are many people that attribute all types of magical, mystical powers to Satan. But in a nutshell, it does. Because according to James chapter 3 and verse 15, if it is not from God, then it is what? Earthly, sensual, and demonic. We understand that. So in a broad sense of the term, all of this is from Satan. Because anything that would keep us from heaven and giving God glory is something that Satan will use as a tool to trap us. In Romans chapter 1, you are quite familiar with a passage that teaches us about those that did not glorify God. They were not thankful. And in that passage, in verse 21 through 31, you see the continual slide into idolatry and all of those evil things, including murder, homosexuality, and Satanism is merely a progression of man's foolishness and his darkened mind. Now, I want to present to you some supplemental material. Insert this about the origin. Some of this is in the manuscript and then get into what you probably were very interested in on. What are the ins and outs of Satanism? And we'll insert this in just a moment. But there are basically two people that are responsible for the modern satanic movement. Aleister Crowley, who's dead now, a magician. And Anton LaVey, born in 1930, and at the age of 39, wrote the Satanic Bible. Now his background was that he was a circus performer, a lion tamer, and he had read some books on magic. And so uh, with all this showmanship, he wrote the Satanic Bible. Now what are the beliefs and practices of Satanism? This you may need a pen for or buy the tape. Plug in the tapes for you. Okay? Now, here are the nine Satanic statements. And these are boiled down in a nutshell. Number one, indulgence, not abstinence. Number two, vital existence, not spiritual pipe dreams. Now when you hear this, you'll, you'll hear the arrogance. Spiritual pipe dreams. He's referring to Christianity. Okay. Uh, number three, undefiled wisdom, not hypocritical self-deceit. Number four, kindness to those deserving it. Not love wasted on ingrates. Ah, you're starting to see the darkness really come out now. Number five, vengeance. Not turning the other cheek. Number six, responsibility to the responsible instead of concern 
for psychic vampires. Number seven, man is just another animal. Listen to this, the most vicious animal of all. Number eight, gratification of all of one's desires. Number nine, the best friend that the church has had since he has kept it in business for all these centuries. You hear the attitude coming through this warped sense uh, of illogic, and you'll see another thing, and this is LeVay's theology concerning these following concepts. People have created gods in many forms. He says, pick one that is useful to you. He says, heaven and hell do not exist. And by the way, let me insert this so that you know it. Satanists, in the true sense of the word, are not devil worshipers. That may surprise you. They will deny it up and down that they don't even believe that there is truly a real Satan. And you need to know this if you want to talk to someone who uh, is getting involved in it because if you come across as ignorant on that subject, they'll turn you off immediately. Understand, Satanists are not devil worshipers. We'll get in more about that momentarily. Satan is unrelated to the modern concept of the Christian devil, they say. Ritual killing of humans or animals are not allowed, they say. Blood drawn from a victim is useless. Victims are killed symbolically, not actually. And the highest of all satanic holidays is the birthday of the Satanist. And it goes on. Now, here are some of the rituals and ceremonies. Again, we're inserting this. And I want you to be aware of some of these things. The names that are used include Satan, Lucifer, Belial, and Leviathan. Now you're going to see, if you haven't already, how bits and pieces of the Bible are taken out, twisted, and totally uh, taken out of context, ignorantly so. You'll see the ignorance of this man the more that you hear from him. Ceremonies are pageants which are used to celebrate a person or an element of faith. Magic rituals consist of three types. There is sex magic, which often includes self-gratification. There is healingness, healing or happiness rituals. And there are destruction rituals. For example, the sticking the pins in a doll or drawing a or writing a description description of the victim's um, death and so forth. Destruction rituals are best performed by a group. Male Satanists wear full-length black robes. Older women wear all black. Young women wear uh, sexually suggestive clothing. All Satanists wear amulets such as the symbol of Baphomet. And Baphomet is the one that uh, is the goat head. And you probably have seen this one many times. It is one that is meant to intimidate. And just by the very, I mean, it looks scary, doesn't it? It looks ugly, too. But that's the Baphomet. Ancient half-human and half-goat god. And so this is used often in combination with a pentagram. And you see the pentagram there. Uh, on the head. And by the way, the pentagram is inverted so that two points are pointing upward to indicate the supposedly horns or authority of Satan. Now, the more you read about this, hopefully from a distance, the more they will give themselves away. The rules of behavior, rules is sort of a, a word in quotes because these are very lawless people, very individualistic. In fact, that's the big key, the big draw to uh, satanic cults and Satanism. Now, the Church of Satan's rules of behavior are that prayer is useless because it distracts people from useful activity, they say. Enjoy indulgence instead of abstinence. Practice with joy all the seven deadly Christian sins. Again, you, you see their ignorance because they go to what they think is the source of Christianity, which is a lot of Catholic teaching, and think that if they go backwards, if they do the opposite of it, then they are really doing something. 
But their idea is to revel in uh, greed, pride, envy, anger, gluttony, lust, and sloth. And so forth in this. Now, I want to present to you the seven assumptions of the Satanic Bible. And these are basically what is boiled down in this book. You'll see it in the manuscript. First of all, they approach it, the matter in that religion is joyless. It is not fun. And you see, if this man in his writings can convince someone who's right on the edge, who's searching, and he can convince them that this is not where you're going to have any fun in life, then he begins to get them to thinking along his path. Now, you know that that's ridiculous, that Christianity... I mean, the more we, the we love and learn and study, you know, I, we have a lot of fellowship where we are. And by the way, came here at Brown Trail, was just received so warmly. Wouldn't believe all the hugs and all the excitement that brethren have for one another, Christian joy, encouraging one another, the Bible studies that go on, the, uh, the young marrieds who look out for each other, the brethren of all ages and types, all cross-section of ages who are concerned about one another, and you cannot tell me that being a Christian is not fun. And amen would work just here. Thank you. Some of y'all promised on that. Another assumption, as you see, is that man is inherently violent. And the way he comes up with this is by just going through and, and listing example after example after example of how man has been violent, and therefore it is natural for him and if he is naturally violent, then it must be good. Totally ignoring the fact that the violence is condemned and many other things as well. If he can get people to see bad is good and good is bad. Now one of the ways that he does this, for example, is by appealing to sexuality. And this is an example of his weak logic. He says... The attraction between male and female is lust. Now, if you buy into that without questioning it or qualifying it, you're in trouble. Because he says it's lust, and uh, this lust is good. And if it is good, then it is satanic. And if, if it is satanic, then it is pleasurable, therefore and the way that you ought to live. It reminds me, you may have heard about this uh, defendant in the courtroom. The lawyer gave this defense. Your Honor, my client did not commit that burglary. My client did not break into the window and take those items. His arm did. And since his arm is not him then it's not fair to find him guilty. Now, wait a minute. Judge, pretty smart judge, said, okay, using your own logic, I hereby sentence your arm to one year in prison and you can accompany it or not. <laughs> not done yet. The man smiled. The lawyer helped him remove his artificial arm, laid it on the bench, and walked out. A free man. Don't buy into the assumptions. And that's what a lot of young people do here. Learn to question, to prove all things by the word of God, and don't fall for their twisted brand. Okay, moving on. Satanism equals strength. You can get what you want. Through Satanism. Only Satanism is relevant. That's foolish. We find that bodily exercise is profitable in some things, but godliness is profitable in all things. Having the promise of life that now is, and that which is to come. Isn't the book of Proverbs quite relevant, as well as all other parts of the Bible? One of my favorite ones is, and I'm not, my wife's not in the audience to hear this, so I think I'm safe. 
Better to dwell in the corner of a rooftop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Now, if that's not relevant, I don't know what, what is. A lot of good advice. A lot of spiritual guidance that is relevant for us today. Satanism is powerful that you can control your enemies through magic. And by the way, Satanists consider witches to be hypocrites. They say we are not witches. Do not lump them together. They make a distinction. They say that witches will claim that they don't want to hurt anybody. They say that's not true. You're hypocritical in that. And of course the final one down there, Christians cannot be sexual beings. Well, very aptly so in the lesson before us, Genesis chapter 2, and what happened when God brought the woman to man. He was literally beside himself and said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Hard to translate in the Hebrew, but I would think that literally and figuratively he could have used the expression, now this is my kind of body. He was beside himself. And this is what God created for us. Marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. So, what they're telling us is not true. Beware of the assumptions and uh, you can deal with those very easily. I want to present to you the broad picture of how involved people really are, or at least seem to be, and if you put together everything that is said and everything that you hear, this is basically what is said to be going on. And I want to make a comment, and some of this may surprise you. This is a model, meaning they're not sure that it's true, but it seems to fit, of a description of everything that seems to be going out there. It's either one of four levels. First is the secret, violent cults. Secret meaning there are all types of people that are involved in it. Coaches, teachers, policemen, daycare centers, ministers. Violent in that those that were once former Satanists are murdered. Babies are sacrificed. Over a half a million babies a year kidnapped for the purpose of satanic rituals. And I'm telling you that this is what is flying out there. And you need to understand that much of this is hype. The media plays up on it. You understand that principle. You need to. We know about rumor, we know about innuendo, and things will just go like wildfire. Now, I have talked to the FBI. I have talked to the Seminole County Sheriff's Department. I have talked to the Orange County Sheriff's Department, both in Orlando, Florida, where we have a lot of immigrants, by the way, as you do too. I have talked to the Fort Worth Police Department. You can check and look and find, try to find some documentation and all you'll come up with the same answer. That all of this, that's go, not all of it, but much of it going on is so overblown and there, there's no documentation for all of the thing, many of the things that are, that are going on. Now I don't want to minimize it because if there's anyone involved in it and someone that you know, that's serious business. And I'm not saying that it's not serious. But I'm saying that we don't need to be afraid to walk down the street. We don't need to be scared to death that out of the blue we're going to be snatched and ritually murdered. That's just overblown stuff. However, there is a reality that there are Satanists out there. The nonviolent organized. Now there are two groups. There is the Church of Satan, as founded by Anton LaVey, 
And then a little while later, they had a fuss over money. And they had a split. <laughs> Church of Satan had a split. Imagine that. And some other guy founded the temple of Set. Set is another word for Satan. Now you need to know as well that most Satanists who are religious Satanists are very skeptical of organizations anyway. Very individualistic. They don't like to be controlled. They don't like rules anyway. So it may be a little different idea than you thought uh, was there. The third one, the ostentatious, let me add the word criminal to that. The ostentatious criminal. These are the people that flaunt satanic symbols that will be happy to burn candles or do anything to get attention and to cover for their criminal acts. Probably the best known type of number three, the ostentatious criminal, would be Charles Manson. Involved in murder, and as he walked out of the courtroom, yelled out, Hail Satan! and unnerved so many people who heard it and who saw it. Again, you got to get to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is that they're criminals. And they're trying to use this to scare people to death. And the fourth one are the dabblers. And the dabblers are mainly teenagers, uh, from teen to maybe the young adult. And these are those that are just getting started. They listen to so-called satanic music. They read some of the books and they'll do some of this little stuff in the backyard with the burning of candles and maybe even sacrifice a bird or something like that. And there's no telling how many people there are that are involved as dabblers. I say all of this to tell you that Satanists are not all alike. You cannot go into a discussion or into the subject with preconceived ideas to try to loop everyone who is together. Now, the way that I approach this, especially in the manuscript, is to not to get so much into the detail of, of satanic cults, but to get into the, the people that are involved, to the wise. But guys, I think as God's people, we have a mission that we are uh, to accomplish. We've got souls that we want to save. The question is, what type of people get involved in this sort of thing? Now this list, uh, the personality types of the teenage dabblers, it focuses basically on those that are just getting into it. And I do not want the word dabbler to minimize this because some of this is quite dangerous. And how do you deal with these things? Well, the first one is the psychopathic delinquent. And it is exactly as dangerous as the name implies. This is the type of person that enjoys hurting other people. And again, the satanic dabbling, all of this stuff just kind of goes right along with his intention to, uh, to scare people to death. Now, the psychopathic, and that's pretty bad, the psychopathic delinquent, involved in a lot of crimes, and basically the only thing you can do is first let the police step in and incarcerate. This is the, uh, this is the highest level. This is somebody to be afraid of physically in the sense of, you know, they could stab you or shoot you or whatever. They're going to do what they want to do. And you're just going to have to let law enforcement step in and deal with them and put a stop to that before you need to go any further. There is the angry misfit, and uh, how many parents who have had teenagers already? Help me out with some of this. What am I in for? Actually, we've, uh, we've had pretty good, good experience with our teenagers, but it is a trying time, isn't it? It's a time of change in their life. It is a time that they are susceptible and it's a time that they may exhibit certain characteristics that you hope they will grow out of. Well, an angry misfit would be this taken to an extreme. Uh, he seems like he hates everyone. He slams doors. He plays loud music with this very intimidating beat, hoping, um, again, to perpetuate this. Uh, it's a way of expressing himself. Going on, the pseudo-intellectual. This is the 
more than likely the young person that uh, wants to impress you with his knowledge of Satanism. And uh, again, if you're not up on some of these things very basic, then they will turn you off and will not listen to you. And the way you approach this person is to simply uh, get them to thinking about the beliefs. You know, why are you believing in this? For example, why did Anton LaVey prescribe a black mass if he was atheist? And get the kid to thinking, get him to scratching his head, and if he'll do that, then hopefully he'll begin to see that this whole thing is uh, illogical and uh, is based on a fallacy, of course. And the final one, the suicidal impulsive, is just what it implies. And if there are those that, of course, have any suicidal ten tendencies, they need immediate help. And as ministers, we have experience with this matter. It is a very uh, grave situation, and uh, we need to be very compassionate as we learn to deal with these people. What are some of the risk factors or indicators of satanic involvement? Well, you know, these days, culture is a big problem to our young people. And we have, and our children have, things today to deal with that many do not. Many of you had never heard. You grew up, you never heard of AIDS. You never heard of teenage gangs. You never heard of drugs like cocaine and so forth, and our children have to deal with this. We need to be aware of this, and of course we are, that's, that's obvious. But there's also the fact that our culture has changed and that role models have changed. You know, you ask a young person who is, who is your favorite, uh, ask them who a favorite musician is, and they can name a rock star just like that, tell you all about them. Or it may be a sports person, it may be an athlete. But look from whom they have to choose. Some of these guys are no more role models than, uh, than the man in the moon. So it's a very trying time for them in that. If you are going to be aware of possible satanic involvement, you would need to watch for changes in that, that person's weight, a young person's weight, their sleeping habits, obviously their clothing habits. Psychological factors include a, a sudden impulsiveness, a lack of instruction, or a, a lack of uh, discipline in their life. There are social factors, such as that they have a need for privacy all of a sudden. They get immersed in this kind of satanic music. Money disappears, and they have strange friends. Now, you may already think that their friends are strange, but their friends get stranger. Beware of that as you see this. Now, what can we conclude from all of this? Well, first of all, I want to make it clear that we should not be intimidated because Satan has no power except to deceive and to tempt and to make a sin. What I'm getting at is that the world thinks that the, all of this uh, occult sorcery and all of this uh, magic is from the source of Satan. I don't believe it. You may, but I don't. Now you look through the Bible and you see that Pharaoh's magicians, for example, gave up, didn't they? If they had so much power rather than sleight of hand, why did they give up trying to mimic what Moses and Aaron were doing? If there's so much power of darkness and magic out there, why did the witch of Endor scream when Samuel appeared? Except that she was surprised. <laughs> How'd that happen? Why did Simon the sorcerer want to pay to get the power that he saw if he had power? You beware of the so-called bewitching and the sorcery is trickery. And that's why we need to hold our head high and not cower, ever. And let's teach all our people that. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, Paul said, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love 
and of a sound mind. And as God's people and as parents, we need to be proactive with our children. We need to turn off the TV, and since I'm getting on a, an airplane in a few hours, I can hit and run here, I think that cable television is a waste of money. You've got rabbit ears, what else do you need? And you say, I know, but they have so many programs. Uh, the good programs, well, are you using that as a babysitter? Teach your children to read, teach them to do their homework, teach them to spend time with other family members. Encourage families to spend every night in a Bible study or devotional. And while they're young, that might be as hard to get them to cooperate as it is to get them to buckle their seatbelt. But that's another thing that I started with my first one since he was first time in the car seat, and I'm thankful that I did. He squalled, but it was for his own good. And children may squall and they may complain or whatever it is as you set a routine for them, but sooner or later, just like a child will learn to buckle himself, that child will learn to come to expect Bible study every night. And they'll cherish it, they'll love it, and you will ground them in a way so that when you see all of these things, all of these influences that come upon them, you know, they're not going to, it's not going to happen overnight anyway. We know that. We know that through experience. And when someone turns away from the Lord, it more than likely just didn't happen overnight. There has been a pattern, decisions made all along. And we need to be aware of it. We need to stay on top of it. We need to love our children, teach them what is right and holy, learn more about God's Word, and expose the darkness of Satan with the light of God's Word. Thank you.